we can use the Victron Connect app to actually connect up to the Smart Shunt. So I've just pulled it up. It's detected the Smart Shunt is advertising its Bluetooth connection, so we can connect to it. Our default pin is six zeros, so we just wanna use that to pair, and that should pair straight away for us. Mine has come up saying there's a new firmware available that it wants to update, so we need to stay close to the Smart Shunt while we do that to make sure Bluetooth doesn't disconnect. So I'm gonna go ahead and update it. While I'm doing this, the arrow light has started flashing on the Smart Shunt. All right, so once our firmware update is complete, we can open up the Smart Shunt, it'll connect. Uh, may I ask you again for your pin code if it does it's just those four zeros as default it'll then prompt you to change it from the default i'm not going to do that right now but it is worth doing just to prevent any unauthorized access to it so as we can see on our output right now it's showing the voltage but it's not showing anything else because obviously there's nothing else on if i turn on my inverter we should start to see a very small amount of glow and we can see the current and power consumption here it's very low because there's nothing plugged into that inverter right now. We want to actually configure this though to make sure everything is fully accurate for our batteries. So if we click this cog up here in the top right, that gives us our settings. We want to go to the battery settings first. It's detected a 200 amp hour battery capacity. This is actually 300 that I've got in this battery bank. So I'm going to change that to 300 AH. So I've changed that now to 300 amp hours. Our charged voltage. So this is a 12 volt system, so it should be 13.2 volt when it's fully charged. So we'll do that one, that's our nominal voltage. Now, because these are lithium batteries, we also wanna set the charge efficiency factor to 99% instead of 95. And we want to set the Pucurt exponent down to 1.05 instead of 1.25. We can also set our discharge floor. This is, a, because these are lithium batteries, I can go lower than that 50%. Um, I could say I want my discharge floor to be 25%. That should be all we need to do now. And we should be ready to start monitoring our battery more effectively. In the settings, we can also configure an alarm. So we can configure these alarms. So we could say low voltage alarm, for example. I might wanna turn that on if my value is getting low or I could set a low SOC alarm, but that's all configured just here. Under MISC settings, we can also specify the monitor mode and what we want the auxiliary input if we're using it to do. Right now, I'm not using it. And of course, we can also connect it to a VE smart network if we have one. So those settings are now all saved to my smart shunt and I can come back out here. And let's say I put a bit more load on this inverter. We should start to see some more current drawing through it. And it should give us our time remaining. So right now it reckons with what I've got currently on here, which is a MacBook Pro and a light and a few other things. We've got about four days, well, slowly dropping down, uh, worth of charge as it's updating itself based on the current load. That's it. That's how you connect up the Victron Smart Shunt to your battery bank and get it all working. I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to like it and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this from me. Bye for now.